Hey everyone, last time we shaped Sonic's head, now we're going to make a face. And hair. To start with, set the cursor to origin and change the pivot point to median point. Shift A, add a cube. Let's add my favorite subdivision modifier. Like always, I'm going to disable optimal display. Now let's get this position to become Sonic's face or mouthy area, then scale and adjust to get it shaped right. Then in edit mode, let's grab these back vertices and move them up. Let's apply the subdivision now, and like we did with his eyes, delete all the geometry we don't need. Select all and shade smooth. It's a little hard to see with the body object being all up in here, so I'm going to disable its visibility. Turn on proportional. Enable connected only. And move the back up into the head. Switch the pivot point to active element. Then select this back edge, with this vertex last, and rotate this entire back edge forward so it kinda lines up with his head. Now let's delete half of his face and mirror it. Enable clipping. And now let's give his face some shape. Let's hide this edge so we're only affecting the top edge, make sure connected only is enabled, and then give his face that sonic look. It's a thing. You know, the sonic face. Unhide, then let's add another edge loop in here. So in an earlier tutorial, I mentioned manually positioning the 3D cursor as an option to help shape stuff, and this is exactly what we're going to do to help shape the round part of his face. I'll show you how it works real quick. Make sure the pivot point is set to 3D cursor, then when we scale, everything will scale towards the cursor. Pretty easy. So to round his face, in the view tab, move the cursor up on the z-axis. Now we're going to scale this edge towards the 3D cursor. It's a little too sharp, so I'm going to raise my cursor position to get a more rounded approach. And now extrude and scale this edge into the head. Also scale this next edge, except for maybe the middle vertex where his nose is going to go. Then adjust so that there's minimal gaps everywhere. Like always, keep adjusting your shape until you're comfortable with how it looks. I try to get it pretty close to how I want the final geometry to look, 
but I'll still do some slight changes during retopoing. So I leave some gaps between objects at seams and don't really worry about it too much. But if you want to, you can clean all that up and have basically the finalized geometry already. Let's not forget to name the object. I mean, who would do something like that? And assign a tan material to his face. Now let's make his nose. Shift A, add a circle. Eight vertices should be plenty for this, but you could do like 64 and get the most high definition nose ever. Position and scale the circle so it fits on that area we left for the base of his nose. Now in edit mode, extrude and then scale consecutive circles to get the shape of his nose. On each end, extrude and merge at center. For the end closest to his face, or inside of his face, do one of those little spiky boys. Select all and shade smooth, and adjust the shape however you want. Add a black material. And Sonic is really coming together. Looks like Sonic now. Well, he, he looked like Sonic before, too, a little bit. Well, a lot. I think you could tell Sonic if it was just like an arm or a leg, surprisingly. You would be able to be like, that's Sonic right there. I'm going to enable wireframe view for his head objects in preparation for adding hair and ears.
Don't forget to name the nose. I forget to name stuff all the time. It's just good practice not to. Now we just need to make his hair and ears, so I'm going to add another collection in the head collection for the hair objects. As always when starting with a new object, make sure the 3D cursor and pivot point are set to what you want. Add a curve, path. Set the depth, I went with 1 meter. Use whatever resolutions you prefer, I'm going to go with 2 and 2. Tab into edit mode and move the handles 2 over on the X axis. Now get this position where his first hair thing is. Rotate on the z-axis so it faces straight back. Now in edit mode, set the radius of the tip to zero and start to shape his hair. Adjust the radius at each handle. Adjust their positions as you see fit. And don't forget to name the object! If you want the curve wider on a single axis, tab into object mode before scaling. I'm going to enable wireframe for funsies. These two edges line up pretty nicely with the edges on his head, so that'll be helpful for retoboing. Time for the next piece of hair. Instead of starting over, let's just duplicate the first one and reshape it. Proportional editing with a sharp fall off is super helpful for reshaping. Position each handle and set each radius. and then name the object. 
In object mode, scale down on the X axis as needed. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Next time we'll wrap up his hair and add some ears. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.